Hello, my dear crafty friends. How are you today? I hope you're all okay. We are going to create a spooky Halloween house from a milk carton or a juice carton. As you can see, there is a part um, that looks like a roof. We're going to cut the upper uh, part of it so it won't be too tall. And this will be our roof with a little chimney. And we're going to start by covering the whole carton with some gesso. That will be our binding agent because we're going to do a lot of painting uh, on the carton and we need it to be with a surface that can take all the paint and all the mediums that we're going to put on it. So we're going to cover everything with gesso. One coat of gesso is enough. Make sure to go inside the part. Uh, under the roof so to speak and you just cover everything this is a milk carton all the writings on it are in Hebrew what you see if you're asking yourself that's Hebrew um, so we're just gonna cover everything with the gesso and dry it with our heat tool now after two sides are dry since you have to lay it on the table to keep painting I didn't want it to be wet because it will damage the coat of gesso so I dried two sides and now we're doing the other two sides so covering everything with the gesso and dry it with your heat tool now we're gonna create our bricks on the house I'm using uh, the brick stencil by Prima and some modeling paste and I'm gonna do the the bricks on the edges and corners of the house because in, in the middle of the wall so to speak we're gonna have windows so we don't want the windows to cover the bricks so the bricks are going to be on the sides and on the bottom Make sure you clean your stencil between uh, the times that you work with it. Otherwise, it's going to smear everything. So I'm just adding modeling paste. Again, we're going to do um, just wipe off any thing that is in the way. Um, we're going to do one side each time so it won't get damaged so after you do one side with the stencil just dry it with your heat tool and turn the carton and move to the other side you just play with where, where wherever you want to put your bricks on each corner and you just do um, whatever how many bricks that you want Again, I'm just doing it on the corner and on the side, like so, and a little bit on the bottom. This way I'll have enough room to put my window. It's kind of cool to create a house from a milk or a juice carton. I, oh, I already created one previously, not for Halloween, but just for um just as decoration it came out really nice it has that part the raised triangle part where the uh, opening is that looks like a roof so I always said I have to create a house out of it because it's really cool and what better opportunity to do it for Halloween right create a spooky creepy house with all kinds of creepy stuff on it we're going to have lots of Halloween embellishments later and all kinds of fun Halloween stuff so moving along with the bricks just make sure you dry them every time they have to be completely dry because we're going to paint over them. 
So now, after all four sides uh, ha are with bricks, we're going to paint all the walls and all the carton with black paint, just acrylic black paint. Make sure you cover all the bricks properly, all the crevices and all the little bumps. And we just cover everything. One coat of black paint is enough. And like we did before, we're going to do two sides and then dry it and do the other two sides. Paint everything, including the what's what's going to be the chimney. The cork. And just cover everything with the paint. It's really fun creating a like this kind of uh, decoration for Halloween. It's you can put it on your uh, shelf or your mantle or in the living room or wherever you put all your Halloween decoration and it's going to be really really cool. I'll also show you how you can put some photos on it if you want. So basically we did two sides. We're going to dry everything so we can turn it and do the other two sides. Because if we put the painted side on the table before it's dry, it will be completely ruined. So we've got to be a little more patient for this project, but in order for it to be really, really nice, just do it gradually like I suggested it will be the best way trust me so just go in there paint it really well and don't forget to dry it really well also with your heat tool so we can move on to our next step. As you can see, it's kind of hard to see the bricks because it's all covered in black paint. So what we're going to do, now everything is dry, we're going to take some perfect pearls and add a little bit of water to it and create a paste. We did that before. I'm using the bronze perfect pearl because it's kind of an orangey color that goes very well with the Halloween theme. So I'm just spritzing a little bit of water. I'm using a bottle cap for this. And now we have a paste and we can uh, highlight all the bricks by taking our fingers, dipping it in the paste and just rubbing it on the areas that we want to highlight, namely the bricks. So you just basically color part of the sides, the front where the bricks are, just making it so much more visible. And you just decide how much you want to put on. If you want it you can cover the everything, the whole side, or just where the bricks are to highlight them. And it gives it more dimension, more depth, more color. Okay, so we're covering all the sides. Gives it so much more atmosphere and vibe of creepy and spooky. Now we're gonna create our roof tiles. We're going to take um, a black cardstock and cut some strips. They're approximately one inch wide. And you can um, just cut uh, the tiles of about one inch or three quarters of an inch. And we don't want them to be very accurate. It's okay if they're crooked and not even in their size because we're going to create a roof that is kind of a scruffy uh neglected kind of look 
and all the tiles are crooked and falling apart and it's not going to be a very neat looking roof. So just cut the tiles. We're gonna have a little pile of tiles and we're gonna uh, glue them to our roof. We're gonna use um, 3D foam tape so they'll have a little height and we're gonna cut strips of the foam tape. This is kinda wide so I'm cutting it in the middle so it will be a little bit more narrow and we're basically going to put a strip of foam tape and glue all our tiles on it and as you can see I'm not putting them in a very straight way kind of a crooked to the side and they are overlapping a little bit like real tiles are and we start at the bottom if you ever seen how a tile roof is made that you start on the bottom and you build your way up so after you did one row of tiles then you add more foam tape and you start working on your second row just need a little bit more glue at the end so just keep on adding those tiles overlapping a little bit like so and not very straight I'm reminding you and you keep on adding those strips of foam tape I'm gonna add I think one more strip to secure it they're kinda long and they don't have anywhere to adhere to like so I'm just adding one more strip and I'm actually going to cover the whole roof with strips of the 3D foam tape now and then I'm gonna do all my rows of tiles at the same time so just build your stripes and when you add to the when you get to the cap it's supposed to be the chimney you have to work your way around it and just add smaller strips and now you can just go ahead and add all your tiles don't forget to overlap them a little bit for a more realistic look and you have to when you work around the cap you have to cut the tiles a little bit so they will fit around it and I just want to add more height to my foam so I'm just adding another strip so if you need to cut it a little bit see each tile I'm cutting it a little bit so it will fit around the cap around the what's going to be the chimney just cover the whole roof with the tiles keep on cutting them to fit around the chimney this part is a bit tricky here just have to cut your tile about in a half and give it a little bit of a angle so it will go around the cap now our roof is half done we're going to need to complete the upper part so we're going to cut some more tiles yes, we need five or six of them and what we're gonna do we're gonna glue them up here we're gonna fold them in half each tile we're just gonna fold it like so and then we're gonna glue them on top of the roof you just add some glue liquid glue this time that was the part that we cut at the beginning if you remember that was a little bit too tall and now we're gonna add our top tiles even here you don't need to 
You don't need them to be very straight, but they do need to overlap. So just add, if there's a little gap, you just add another one. Just arrange them so they will not look too tidy and they will have kind of a messy look. And now you take back your paste. If it's a little bit dry by this point, then add just a little bit of water and it will come back to life. And the same way we did with the bricks, we're going to take our finger and go over the tiles with the paste. Makes them pop out, be more visible, have a little bit more definition and interest. And it also gives it a more realistic look and a little bit of a spooky kind of a mysterious look with all that shimmer and metally kind of a look. Go over the chimney as well. It's like when you're distressing something with on the edges, it's the same thing. Go all around the edges of the roof. And now our basically our house is done. This is the base. Now we create the windows. The windows are going to be from an orange cardstock. We're going to need four windows. I'm using Spellbinders um, dies. We're going to do frames and we're going to do triangles for the windows. So we're going to do four windows, one for each side. And I'm using my cuddle bug, but you can use whatever cutting machine that you have. And if you don't have a cutting machine, you can just um, go with a pencil on the cardstock and draw four triangles or squares even if you want. And just cut them with your scissors. I'm actually using two sizes. So I'll have two sizes of window. It's going to be a little more interesting. And now the first two. I always like to go twice on the machine. It cuts it really well. So like I said, we need four windows. So two and then another two. And now we're going to create our frames for the windows from a black cardstock. So these are the nestabilities. They go one inside of the other, the dies, and then they create the frame. It's really cool. So you have, you need four frames. This is how it's going to look. So you need four frames for each window. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm a little, still a little bit hoarse from all my coughing, but feeling much, much better. Thank you for everyone who has been asking. I really appreciate it. You're so sweet. It's really nice to know somebody's interested in how you're feeling. So now we're going to cut um, small stripes, black stripes. Um, they're gonna, going to be at the size of, um, it can either be quarter of, of an inch and, or eighth of an inch. It kind of depends on you. I did uh, eighth of an inch. And these are go these are going to be the bars on the window. So I'm just using this small guillotine, moving the cardstock eighth of an inch each time and cutting. So you'll need two bars for each window times four windows. That's eight bars all together. I think I'm cutting way too much here. So these are our small bars and now we can assemble our windows. We're going to do it directly on the house. So first we're going to distress the window a little bit with some ink. That gives it a kind of a look that it's not one dimensional and it seems like there is a light inside the house. So the light is shining through the glass. So we're going to adhere the window to the side of the house with some foam tape and the frame is going to be on top of it 
and the bars are going to be like like so so just put a little bit of glue on the bars not too much they're very narrow so one like this and the other one vertically so these are the bars and we're gonna add just trim the edges we're gonna add the frames also with some uh, 3d foam tape I like when things are a little bit have a dimension and not so uh, flat so I'm just cutting very narrow strips of the 3d foam tape and putting them on the frame and small pieces for the corners as well it's a little bit of work but I think it's it's worth it if you don't want to mess around with it you can just use regular glue and just glue it whatever you more comfortable for you and faster and if this bugs you and you don't want to mess around with it just do it the easier way I like to do it like this so this is the first window and now we pick up the pace it's not that I'm working this fast it's just <laughs> I edited it a little bit more rapidly so we can just move along so I'm actually adding the um, windows at different heights kind of makes it a little more a little bit more interesting so I'm adding the bars this is a smaller window and if you want to add photos on these windows then you just don't put on the bars unless of course you can add four small photos in between the bars but if you want a large photo then you just don't put the bars and you put the photo and use the orange window as matting for your photo and that can look really nice so here are our four windows on all sides and now we can uh, pay attention to our embellishments so I have two spiders um, I'm going to emboss them they're chipotle uh, spiders remember I didn't have any embellishments so thank you my friend Irit Irit Shalom for giving me all those embellishments she really helped me thank you dear so I'm just adding some black color where the stays on ink because I want it to be very flat if I had painted it with acrylic paint it would never be as flat as if I inked it because you would have the brush strokes and whatever so now some embossing ink on the black spiders and I'm using uh, a clear glitter embossing powder so they'll, they'll be glittery and dimensional but still black as spiders should be always amazes me how cool embossing is really really nice effect so we're just using the heat tool to emboss it so now the spiders <coughs> excuse me the spiders are ready I have my cutout witch on the broomstick two witches don't know if I'm gonna use both of them I embossed the skull with some white embossing powder and the pumpkins they were also chipboard I used uh, I painted them with some orange acrylic paint and then I embossed them with some glitter uh, it's I mixed clear embossing powder and orange glitter and I mixed them together and put them on the pumpkins and it looked great with after I heat it with a tool with the heat tool um, these are my I'm going to add a little bit more embellishments now we're gonna create two spooky eyes 
I'm going to take the one inch punch and punch two white circles from white cardstock and glue them inside my two bottle caps that I have and then we're gonna take our half inch circle punch and punch two black circles for to complete our eyes and to cover all of this I'm using the ice resin which I really really like what I like about it is that it sort of looks like a syringe and when you press it it comes out of the two nozzles the same amount that you need so it's so cool you don't have to worry if this is enough or the other material is enough and you just need to mix it for like a minute and then it's ready and I'm pouring it into my bottle cap and the other one and of course you have to let it dry for about 24 hours so you might want to do that before you start working on this project or just do it and then after it com it dries add it to the house now we're going to create i'm going to do a little ghost with my pencil and going to cut it it's just a plain white cardstock this is what happens when you don't have Halloween embellishments. You have to create them yourself. But I really like doing that. It's fun. So just cutting out. And I'll go over it with a black pen just to define the shape. just trim whatever excess you have and I have my little eyes my moving eyes and we're gonna glue them to my our ghost our spooky spooky ghost should this one eye and the other eye and all I have to do now is do the mouth and the ghost is ready here I have um, an embossed skeleton so I'm gonna cut it also embossed with white powder embossing powder should just cut around it go inside and cut it very slowly so it will be ready to put on the house so here's our skeleton also ready and now I need a B for my boo it's gonna be boo with the two eyes so here's the B I'm gonna just paint it with some orange acrylic paint not even gonna emboss it just give it a coat of paint and that's it I'm using grunge board I really love this material it's very easy to work with and it's kind of soft Let's just take a piece of paper here with sponge and just go over the bee with some orange acrylic paint you can emboss it or if you want to but I I'm not gonna emboss it so now our bee is ready let it dry for a few minutes and then we can start adding all of these embellishments to our house gonna be really really fun so now this is the house gonna move everything aside and start adding our embellishments first I'm gonna take um, some cheesecloth 
so I can create my spider's web. And it also reminds me of these um, bandages that corpse have, like zombies or mummies. or So any way you look at it, it's it fits. So you just pull it and take apart, take it apart a little bit so it will look scruffy and messy and used. And you just glue it. Just put a little bit of glue onto the house and you just glue it on. I really like working with cheesecloth adds a lot of dimension and texture a lot of fun so we just add it to the house and now I'm gonna add my spider with a little bit of foam tape so it will have more dimension Here is my spider on its web. Now on the other side we're going to put our boo with our two eyes. You probably wonder how it's dry. I had to stop and wait and I came back the next day and completed the project. <laughs> it's not super drier something like that just uh, that it is 24 hours later so now I'm adding my two pumpkins and my skeleton on another side of the house and on top of it my other spider with some foam tape when you work with foam tape it always seems like whatever you add is off the it pops out of whatever it is you're gluing it on so it really a nice look my skull is going to peep through the window like I said you could have photos in there and here is my ghost I'm gonna take another piece of cheesecloth and add it to my house don't forget to pull it before and take it apart a little bit before you add it so it will look a lot more realistic with all those threads coming out so we're just gonna add this as well on the top really adds a nice look to it. I'm using my bone folder to tuck it a little bit under the window. Now do the other side. That was my hair. Sorry about that. <laughs> On the other side. Tuck it a little bit. I'm gonna cut this is too big. So just tucking it under the window. Now we're going to add some spiders. Some small spiders in the window. Freaky, freaky. I bet you wouldn't want spiders on your window. And now we're going to create like a bear tree with no leaves like you see like on all the Halloween photos just add a little bit more paint to it with distress ink there's always this lonely leafless wood uh, sorry tree that is stands outside the house and looks so sad so this is the tree that we're gonna create where to put it gonna put it here so I'm using these Prima um, wood embellishments and from two branches I'm creating a tree. 
just adding it to the house pops out a little bit and that's okay more realistic look and now our witch is going to be flying above the roof just I'm inserting it like so to the roof just wait a little bit until it's dry you can also use a hot glue gun but this glue is fine also you just wait for a few seconds and it's dry and see this is the house and this is one side and the roof with the witch on top this is the side with our skeleton with our skull sorry and the ghost and here is our tree and our boo and like I said you can add photos uh, on the windows just get rid of the bars you don't put them and you can under the frame just insert um, a photo of your kids with costumes or whatever photos you want so thank you very much for watching I hope you liked it see you next time